Welcome everyone to this month's webinar. Uh, today we're going to talk about the Project Center. Um, so the Project Center has been an evolving feature over the last couple of, I'd say, last four releases. Um, and it's basically trending towards the mashing of your project outline view with your bookings. Um, there's been an you know, ongoing desire in the open air world to commingle those two events. Um, and this is kind of where the product is heading with regards to being able to manage your bookings within your project plan without having to leave the project plan. Uh, so it, it is an optional feature. Um, and there are quite a few switches that uh, are um, needed for this to be fully functional. Um, first, I should let you know, it, it's only available if you're in the latest UI. So you need to be at least in open air user experience phase two UI. Um, and as everyone probably knows, um, you, they will be at least the latest is they will be forcing everyone to upgrade to the latest UI. Uh, by the release this spring. So you should, if you're not, please plan on uh, making that change. But if you're interested in this product, you absolutely will need to do that. There's also a few other settings that are needed. Uh, there's an inline editing and list view option um, that can be enabled. It's not a requirement of the Project Center, but I'll show you some of the benefits of that. Um, and then there's the Project Center outline view is, is the actual Project Center feature. Um, then there's the Project Center booking worksheet feature, which also should be enabled in your account. And then once this is enabled, um, there becomes a new role permission uh, that needs to be set to be able to see the Project Center and permission to access it. So uh, a little bit of setup there uh, to, uh, to go ahead and do that. And once that's done, though, when you go look at your projects in OpenAir, you'll notice a new tab uh, in the project called Project Center. Um, and, and then by clicking on that, you will you can customize your view like normal, but you'll also see kind of a combination of the project outline view along with um, bookings. Uh, so it does allow you uh, some uh, flexibility there from a single screen, and we'll talk about what you can and can't do here. Before we get into the project center, uh, I want to highlight the, the project outline view is the foundation uh, for the project center and it gives you the ability to not only manage your bookings, but also manage your project plans all within one single screen. So you can add bookings either at the project level or at the task level, depending on how you're set up. Um, you can update those bookings using inline editing. You can add built-in or custom fields for both bookings or tasks to the outline view. And then there's drag and drop functionality with tasks being able to create predecessor relationships and, and move uh, a task within phases as well. So you have uh, that, that comes with the inline editing feature uh, that uh, I talked about in the last slide. So here you can, uh, with the inline editing enabled, you can move uh, you can move things around. You can update dates, um, hard hard end dates, hard start dates. You can update uh, planned hours if their planned hours are at the task level. Um, you can move within phases. You can also create from here. Also, one note: if you have the full inline editing, um, the notes field on a task. If any of you are using that to store any key information. Uh, you can expose that in the project outline view, and you can now inline edit into the notes field from the project outline view. So again, if you're using that notes field, um, you can now do inline editing there without having to go task by task. Uh, from the project plan and um, in the project center here, now you can, in addition to updating your bookings, you can add new tasks, phases, or milestones. And again, reorganize your project plan here as well. So it does give you, you see inline editing dates um, as well in, within this view. So it can be very, uh, very useful uh, for saving the amount of clicks and opening multiple forms. With the project center overlaying the outline view, now we can start to manage our bookings. Um, 
So you will see what looks like a booking grid uh, laid out on your project outline view. Um, now you are limited to weekly view as of today. I'm hoping that, that they give you some functionality and flexibility as we continue to uh, add to this feature. But for today, it is uh, hard coded to weekly. <clears throat> Um, and um, so you can come in here and you can, you'll see the, the green create, and I'm going to actually jump into a demo instance of open air and I'll show what this actually looks like in, in real time. Uh, but you can go in and add resources at a project level and um, put in with the weekly amounts, you can set the booking types from here as well. And then once you've put all the information in, you can save uh, the record and it'll update the bookings on the back end. If you have multiple strings of uh, bookings, uh, so you've created bookings and then you create additional bookings, um, it will show as separate lines in the project plan. And if they're if they share all the same, um, mostly all the same attributes, except for the fact that the dates are different, you can actually um, combine those into a single view. Uh, in the it's an option to collapse and combine those. So you do have that option. Um, to be able to see one, uh, one level of detail per user within the project plan. You don't, you're not limited to entering weekly amounts. So uh, what you can do is when you go to create the booking, instead of um, creating it and inputting it week, 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 you can actually start with a start and end date and an hours in between. Um, that would can give you a starting point. And then using that as a starting point, you can go in and adjust the hours uh, each week over week um, in this uh, same worksheet view. Uh, so that, that can be handy and you know, if we, we use this a top step, you know, I'll create some uh, placeholder projects for upcoming work. We'll assign some generics and I'll book, you know, just kind of a peanut butter spread of hours between what I think the start and the end date's gonna be. And then as the project becomes more visible and as we start to assign resources, then I'll use this view to start to move around the weekly allocations of hours uh, within this view for, uh, for the resources. So again, can, can be very uh, time-saving there as well. So let's jump in. Let's jump in real quick and I'll show you a couple of these things. Um, so here in the sandbox account, um, this sandbox is, I'm sorry, this demo account is set up to book to a task. Uh, so you'll see this review SOW task is set and we've got some folks uh, booked to this task. Um, I can come in here and make changes by double clicking into the row. Um, I can update, I can add. refresh this. There we go. So I can come in and make changes. I can go in and say, well, we're going to do 14 the week after. I can update the booking types here and as well. Um, you can inline edit the dates. So if you want to update the dates here, you can come in. There's even some, some uh, little helpers on the side here if you need to. But I can go ahead and you know, make changes here to the dates. Um, and then I can hit save. And then I've made changes to my project plan. Um, I, when I create new bookings, I can create it at the project level by coming here, creating, taking Tim, and here, Tim is here. I can say, I'm gonna go ahead and confirm Tim. And I can go ahead and click these three dots and you'll have an add bookings option. Uh, so if I click the add bookings option, now I can come in and go ahead and add kind of a, a peanut butter smear of bookings for Tim uh, against this. And currently it is set to you have to add hours, not percentage of, of work schedule. But hoping that that also becomes an option downstream. 
And then once I'm good with that, I can go ahead and save that. I can also from here, if I want to delete, I can come in and delete the bookings as well uh, for anyone. We'll go ahead and hit save. So you'll see it took my hours and it just put them week over week by based on 8.89, based on the number of weeks I booked for Tim. Here you'll see under groups uh, option here under you have where you can look at this data grouped versus not grouped. I reload this. So you can see how Tim is showing up now. Each week becomes a different uh, a different view. This becomes a little hard to be able to kind of straight see streamline. So that's why we want to go ahead and turn the grouping back on, and that will give us a more streamlined view of the data. There we go. Okay, and then these again are booked down to the task level. So if you are booking to a task, um, you can uh, use this to book to the task. And then I wanted to show here, this is a sandbox account. Um, we've got, I've got the notes enabled in this view. Again, you can enable combination of booking data and task related data, as well as project related data in the views. And you know, if, I'm, if I am using notes, if I go to a, a notes field that's associated with a task, I can now inline notes uh, for each, for the task. So again, that's a, it's a feature of the inline switch being enabled in the account. There's one other uh, feature I wanna talk about that just came out in the last release. Um, let me get back to my PowerPoint. And that's the enable for bookings to drive your task finish dates. So if you're booking to a task and you are not managing your task dates, which a lot of customers do, they'll focus on the booking dates but not focus on updating the project task dates. So this task dates generally are, you know, not accurate in any way, shape or form. Um, but also there's generally no way to see, you know, if the book last booking date easily or that's driving where the task will be completed. Uh, so if that's you, then you may be interested in this feature. Um, it allows you to add a custom field to the project properties. And when you check that project, that custom field called calculate project schedule based on bookings, what then happens is when booking to the task, the finish date becomes the latest booking date. So if three folks are booked and one is booked, you know, on 1231 and the rest are finishing 1130, well, the finish date on that task will say 1231. It'll be the latest booking date. So that could be handy in looking at your project task list. And even though you're, you're managing the bookings, but you can then start to see, well, based on you know, my bookings, here's where my task will align. And you know, is that an issue or is that not an issue? Or do I need to update my bookings? So it can be a nice feature as well. Uh, so Again, and what it also does is it will mimic your planned hours to mimic your booked hours. So not, not only does it manage the finish hours, but it will also uh, update the planned hours as booked hours are entered. Now, you, some of you may say, well, I don't want my booked hours, my planned hours to update um, because I want to be able to um, see what was originally sold and then compare the two. So what I would recommend there is if you are interested in this feature and you do not want, uh, you do want to see your original that you do baselining in open air. So set up your project, take a baseline. Then once you put in your bookings, your hours, it will then, you can then compare your baseline to what's been planned, which is what's been booked. Um, and then you have that visibility all in one place to see how things are going within your project. So again, interesting feature uh, that could be, put, could be useful in the right scenario. We talked about grouping of the details here. So this, I jumped the gun there, but let me jump in back into open air. So 
So you'll notice, let me jump into my demo account. So you'll see my review SOW has an end date of 11.26, right? Finish date rather. Um, there are three resources. So Thomas, his bookings go out through 11.26. Um, and Marie goes out through the 10.22. And um, Yang Lee goes out through 1126. And so that's what's driving um, this finish date. It's taking the latest bookings uh, between what's been entered and what's been um, planned with the dates. Jump ahead. So there's the Thomas booking that's driving the end date of 1126. Again, driving your um, driving your uh, booked hours to match your uh, booked dates to match your uh, finished dates. Be aware also, it, you cannot use end dates to um, hard code. Once you hard code end dates, uh, obviously your finished dates will follow your uh, finish no later than dates. So this really is just using system calculated finish dates. Um, in the project plan. Now you can use predecessors uh, along with this feature. So you could have a start based on an end and then have a finish date driven by the booking. So you can, predecessors are available for this uh, feature as well. So kind of a summary here, what are some of the benefits of the project center? Uh, you can quickly edit bookings for a project. There's your one place to manage your project and your resource management. And again, there's a use case here, you know, your project managers are also managing their bookings here. Uh, so they're, they're making the changes versus requesting changes, which is a whole nother, you know, setup scenario. Uh, you know, what do you need to consider here? Um, you need to, you know, you are, you, you are updating one project at a time, so you're not seeing the impact across projects when you're moving around the resourcing. Um, you cannot use any booking approvals as part of this project center today. Uh, no no uh, formal approvals, rejections um, within that. And again, um, you're, you're, you're going to need to, you know, if you're moving pieces around, you know, you across multiple projects with multiple PMs, you're gonna to wanna to be monitoring for co potential conflicts that got created uh, as part of those movements around. So uh, be mindful of that. So thank you guys for joining today. Um, thank you for supporting uh, Top Step. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording and I can see we've got a few questions that we will answer. So one second.